I'm Fiona Sampson and I'm a poet and I'm here to think about the work of the Sanger Institute in poetry. I am very excited by working with scientists as well as with artists in other art forms because I think that the best work is often collaborative. I'm particularly interested in working at the Sanger Institute because I'm very interested in the human genome. Um, I didn't grow up with my birth family and like most people in that situation I have lots of questions about my identity. So I have a very sort of immediate sense of the importance of genetic identity and how close it is to something personal and emotional which is lived out in my daily life. I think the challenge about taking something technical and opaque for a civilian like me, <laughs> uh, like DNA, and making poetry which addresses it is is precisely that opacity. I don't see the point of such poems is to explain for, as it were, a non-specialist audience. I think the point of such poems is to make a bridge between the two worlds, both so that people who are specialists and scientists are thinking back to the more general human meaning of what they're doing, and also for the rest of us, thinking from our human positions towards the science. Fiona really inspired quite a change in the way that I think about um, our relationship with the research participants and with the subjects that we're, that we're sequencing the genome of. And in a way, she, she gave flesh to those people. It's always great to talk to people who aren't scientists about your own work because it forces you to, to look at your work in a completely different way. I work on malaria and sometimes it's easy to get very caught up in the incredibly interesting biology and talking to people actually about what we work on brings it all home that this is not an interesting biological problem, this is actually a disease that kills hundreds and thousands of children every year. And so talking with Fiona was an example exactly like that. It was an opportunity to step back and see our research from an outsider's perspective and think more deeply about why we do the things that we do rather than the, the experimental details of what we do. I don't want to make any claims for myself as a poet, but I think that poetry is actually rather a useful way for scientists to think about what they're doing, particularly when they have done something extraordinary and brilliant, as, as has happened here. And maybe the next stage is to um, recontextualise that extraordinary brilliance for the rest, not just of society, but of humanity. What I enjoyed most about the workshop was the opportunity to talk about our science on a completely, in a completely different format. So we usually share data and we usually share information a lot in, through the forum of uh, formal presentations or papers or uh, manuscripts or PhD theses, quite formal and, and a very precise way of writing, a very precise way of talking about something. There's no emotion there. You record what you did you record what the possible interpretations of the data are. You're very careful not to go too far. The workshop was an opportunity to throw all that convention aside and talk about the research and the, and the data on a completely different level where it was okay to talk about emotions, where it was okay to, to not write in a very specific, specified way. And I found that quite a liberating experience. Here, now here, between the trees, so that it seemed at moments as if day, my body wakes walking. to itself. A forest of cries and small deaths as organs punish organs in the prime. I struggled with writing about all of it. Because I knew that the process for me was about this dialogue between two ways of going on, but then how do you write about that? Poetry which knows its destination from the first line is going to fail. <laughs> It's going to be a bit of dogmatism, it's going to be a bit of doggerel. Um, so I had to sort of estrange myself from the actual experience and make it much more, loosen it up so it could be exploratory. And um, sort of write towards this mysterious nexus of different ways of thinking about the self. But even that I found hard because you know, I came with certain autobiographical preconceptions or, or, or baggage and 
even to write that would be to preempt, well, to pre-know the conclusion. So I couldn't be autobiographical, but I couldn't distance myself either. I had to feel my way into it. That looking is a self-enclosing after Emily Dickinson. We build starward, but something makes us fall. Nor warehouses, nor yards can serve us all. But self-enclosed, like Emily, we stare and yearn. The skies disclose no pilot star. Till in the black we nudge a new landfall. And each gaze bounces back, skies sweet, unstable, all.